warrior. Out in the road, come out in the road, warrior. Out in the road, come out in the road, warrior. Mama, mama, your son in the grave already. Your son in the grave already. Take a towel and ban you belly. Mama, mama. Greetings and salutations everyone and welcome back to another of my videos. Now, once you hear me attempting, attempting to sing that song, you know exactly what we are going to talk about today. We are still on the topic of stick fighting. But before we get into the meat of the matter and all the nitty gritty, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all my subscribers. And if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by and welcome. Now, if you're watching this video and you've not yet subscribed, what are you waiting on? Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up as well. And of course, turn your post notification on so that whenever I post a video, you'll be one of the first persons to be notified. Now that we've had those housekeeping out of the way, let's get straight into today's video. Now, in the last video I did on stick fighting, we were talking about the physical elements. And so if you've not yet seen that video, I'm going to put it and pin it in this video right here so you can go ahead and you can watch it. Um, and I did say to you that to the, we are, the next video on stick fighting, we are going to be talking about the spiritual elements. So you know, um, the symbolic elements, sorry. And so you know exactly what we are getting into. And under the symbolic elements, we are going to be talking about this historical element, the ritual element, and we're going to talk about the, um, the spiritual element. So when we're talking about the symbolic elements, we're, when you think symbol, you think about representational. Yeah? Always think representational. And so that is what we're going to be talking about today. And so we're starting with our historical elements. Now, when you think about stick fighting, you want to ask yourself, or you want to ask yourself where exactly did stick fighting come from? How did it get to us here within the Caribbean or within those territories that it is being practiced? And we are going to talk a little bit about that. Now, there are two main influences on stick fighting within the Caribbean. And those two influences would be the West African society and India. Remember, we'd have had um, Africans who were brought here in the Caribbean of course, to work on the plantation. And we had a number of indentured Indians who also came to the Caribbean to work. And when they came, these people, they would have brought with them their own form of stick fighting. Yes. And so in the spaces where these particular um, people, set of people would have resided, these were the spaces where stick fighting would have taken root. Trinidad so happened to be one of them. And so the style of stick fighting that you'd find in Trinidad would be a combination of what it is that's practiced in West Africa and that of the Indian um, stick fighting. The Indian stick fighting is, I think it's called Gatka, G-A-T-K-A or G-A-D-K-A, right? I've seen both spellings whenever I, um, whenever I was doing this particular research. And so I'm going to just show you a short clipping from, from a video. And I'm, of course, I'm going to put the link of the video in the comment section where in a very quick one minute synopsis, yes, this origin is explained. So here goes. Ask any question. Where's the fighting come out? Well, stick fight originally is an African martial arts tradition. Right. You could see the sticks being used all the way on the walls of Egypt. Mm. But through enslavement and even beyond that, different travels, the African people came to the Caribbean, mm. passed through Haiti, all these different parts, picked up all the different different styles, different dances, different style of drum. And by the time it launched in that, mm. and it mixed with the Indian population, with the, the, the Gatka and, and from, the, from the Muslim side of stuff. Right. And you have the, the people coming from the Amerindians. We have this thing now mm. called Bois or Kalinda. Right. You know what I mean? So, but, so I always thought it was two fellas bounce up somewhere in Point Fort. Okay, you see a real, <laughs> real Brahma from Point. Yeah. And um, they was fighting over some girl and a man pull out a stick and it was, that is how it originated. Well, in a way it kind of originates, so you know. <laughs> in a way. Oh, what it, watch, me watch me now. Watch me now. 
yeah yeah it kind of originates so because just like samba in brazil because you know brazil have the capoeira right it's the same african dance tradition but it's a fight mm. involving drum and dance mm. the dance the samba is uh, is like the, the male trying to attract the female right so back in the day i think it was in, in haiti you would have find that the dance was just calling there was a dance mm. between two fellas by a drum right then press right. the girls outside oh and he chose okay. that girl, girl but then they see you know he vexed because the girl watch him and sit with could go and pick up six and fight outside and fight. Right, so it's kind of right. start there when everything blend now so right. yeah the stick fight and yeah they're still pulling all right all right <laughs> good 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 yeah. so I all right i do trust and hope that that was quite useful and it did in fact sum up for us what it is that you know i was trying to say to you before about that aspect of the origin of stick fighting and so let us continue now when we think about stick fighting both forms of stick fighting indian and the west african stick fighting both of them also represented an attainment of manhood Yes, both forms. And that's one of the purposes of stick fighting was about attainment of manhood. Um, I think Rondell, in an article I read, was he referred to it in a way where he said that the guile is the final leg of the process. He said that the entire process of training for stick fighting is like an adult, um, is like is like is like a training into adulthood. That is how the entire training happened. And it's like the 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 the, the guile is like a exam right that was what the guy was like an exam so you go through this process of, of adulthood training and then at the end you will result in a ritual combat and so it is one of those things that is about the attainment of manhood another thing about stick fighting historically was that stick fighting is an act of resistance yeah, it's an act of resistance. And who know about resistance more than us here within the Caribbean? Because the truth is the embedded within our DNA and, and, and our culture and how we lived, even from our ancestors, we, we had to resist. There were things that we needed to resist, the oppression, you know, the brutality, all of those things they had to resist. And so stick fighting was, of course, seen as an act of resistance. And we can understand it's a fight. Remember, we said in the previous video that it is a form of martial arts and it's a warrior dance. What do warriors do? Fight. What do martial artists do? Fight. So guess what? It's, a, it's, it's, it's about fighting. And so naturally, we can understand why it would be seen as a form of resistance. So much so that stick fighting played a major role in 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 his in, in um in historical events within the caribbean so for example the Cambalay riots of of 1881 within trinidad now when the government would have banned carnival activities and protest and the people started to protest right the stick fighters were also involved in this kind of protest where they put up the resistance against the colonial police at the time and of course we know that thereafter stick fighting would have been banned but the stick fighters were also a part of the the, the resistance again when the jose festival was banned in 1884 and persons still decided that they wanted to go into the street and march etc the stick fighters also played a role in that as well so we can understand how stick fighting would end up in this space because of the nature and the energy of what stick fighting really is about Another thing when you want to look at historical in terms of the representation historically is that stick fighting was also or is, let me use the word in the present tense, is also a form of um, cultural identity. Yes, it's also a form of cultural identity because one of the things about the stick fighting is that it allows us to understand who we are and and and, and a kind of self-awareness and self-realization right there's a particular video i was watching it's a ted talk video where you had two solid stick fighters from um from from trinidad i think it's keegan and rondell i'm going to put a link in the in the comment in the comment section in the description so you can see it and they were talking about the fact that the 
ancestors would have left clues within the stick fighting for us to be able to see ourselves, to be able to connect with ourselves, and to also be able to exude and express that kind of beauty about us through the stick fighting. And so because it allows us to have that kind of self-awareness about who we are, that kind of self-realization, it, it gives us a sense of empowerment and empowers community and empowers people yeah to own who they are again stick fighting is a form of celebration and when we look at what it is doing now it is celebrating us as a people it is celebrating the identity it is celebrating that warrior spirit within inside within us but also when you look at it in terms of celebration otherwise within barbados and trinidad this particular form it's 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 a major part of the crop over within Barbados and it's also a major part of the tree of the of the carnival um festivities or carnival celebration within the Trinidad environment whenever you have um I think you have the national stick fighting competition right and so because of that you can see how you're using it to celebrate yourself as a people celebrate all the people who are here and just a way of preserving culture to these different kinds of, of, of avenues and so it's practiced openly we can't overlook the fact that at some point stick fighting was banned and in 1937 when you know the ban was lifted you know persons just started practicing stick fighting openly to where we have it now where it's been practiced with rules and different things that are happening so that's a good thing for us yeah all right so we're going to talk a little bit about the ritualistic now the ritualistic and the spiritual are closely connected very closely connected because there are some things that are I mean, ritual and it is through the ritual that we sometimes get to the spiritual yeah it's through the ritual that we get to the spiritual so once you're going to have the stick fighting let us talk about ritualistically you have to prepare your your your, your war yeah your pui and of course you get your pui stick and you have to get it to the size that it's supposed to be and you have to cure it so it can become as flexible as you want it to be because remember it's a fight and you want something that will move yes you want something that will move and not break easily so you have to put some flexibility in it and of course there's a process that you have to take the pui through that will allow for that flexibility in the wood and allow it to give you maximum efficiency when you're fighting. Now I'm going to show you a, a, a short clip from the interview with King Santos where he's explaining what it is that you do whenever it is that you are curing or preparing the stick for combat. <laughs> Relax attitude. So yeah. tell us about how, what do you do to cure this stick to prevent it from breaking? We've heard so many things about what is done. How do you well, cure it? Well, well, Rapa, when, you, when you go to the bush and you get your stick, you, you're, going to, you're going to bend it four points, four points, which is to, to release the spring in the stick. Because remember the stick alive and it's stiff. Right. When you cut it, you come with it. You left it at, at two days with the skin on it, and then you take out the skin, you cut it to your length, and you, you drill, drill a little hole in it, and you put a little linseed oil in it. And that oil. Little oil will soak through. Linseed oil, I said, right? Yeah. That, that is all. But long time they used to put iron to the end. Okay. And I make them, I, I went to the tongue hall, San Fernando, and I make them. To know that they can have to play with, the, with 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 those things, and then so they cut it off. But before it was with iron in the end, and they, they put tape on it. You understand? But there's a serious boss here with the iron. <laughs> yeah, hmm. was that was a dangerous game, you know. <laughs> So I hope you made some notes. I hope you 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 jot down some things, and you can learn from it. And you can even go ahead and try to cure your pui stick, your, your own boy, if this is the very first time interacting with it and you're not necessarily try it now and see how it works for you. All right. Now we're continuing. Now when you continue to think ritualistically, now the shout of pui, pui or boy 
is a is also a part of the ritual of the stick fighting and this brings us talking about the singing and the chanting and the drumming the excessive singing chanting and drumming that's a major part of the ritual of the stick fighting and that is why those words can be shouted during or chanted during the, this the stick fighting because it forms a part of the overall process and it is being chanted by spectators those who are looking on and of course you have the chantel as we talk about on the course who will be singing and carrying the singing for the people to follow and this is also a part of the ritual because the singing and the chanting and the drumming this is what ushers yeah the fighter into the ring and so you're not they're not going to go into the ring until this kind of ritual would have happened and critically once they get into the ring they will continue responding to the singing and the chanting however they do not start the fight without paying respect to the drum remember you know we said that in the previous video that boy it is the drumming that is guiding and leading the um the fighters dictating what they do in terms of how they move yes what they or they dance and the kind of beauty that they exude while they are fighting the drum is the boss the drum is the leader and so religiously before any fight starts they must pay respect to the drum that's ritualistic and it also takes you into the spiritual aspect of it so here is a short clipping again another short clipping explaining yeah the singing and the chanting and the role of the drum in this moment by the time you pick up the stick mm. and you go before the drum the drum is the boss mm. the drum putting all in position so i will be here as a element of the drum to make sure they're safe but really and truly the drum <coughs> going and guide all the so, action, so how, the, the how the fight actually starts then between the two people so you, you, the drummers start you actually have three drummers right and you listen to the drum right so the drum calling you so let her go right so they, they come up and they touch stick so it's awesome i'm showing you where you have to go or you have to go by the drum the boss the drum is the boss right pay tribute to the drum all right so let's talk now about the spiritual component of this of this thing called stick fighting um we're starting with the ring let's start with the guile now a part of the spirituality is that the guile is the space of liberation yes is a space of liberation where you're able to go into this 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 ring at your own will without any restriction getting inside there and tell yourself that you are going to fight you're owning your own self within that space but not only that but you're going into a space where you are going to be hit or you're going to throw some blows and hit somebody and it's about being hit and being able to, to process that pain and that you feel in a particular way and still owning that pain still standing strong and still feeling as if listen you would have accomplished something by going into that ring being very light on your feet and doing that which you're supposed to do it is that self-realization we talked about when we talk about the the the, the, the historical um representation of the stick fighting so within that ring that space of liberation for you to do whatever you want to do being guided by the drum in your own way doing exactly what it is that you're supposed to be doing in that ring yes secondly we want to look at spiritually again in terms of a spiritual um, aspect symbolically you want to think about what is called the body in possession and listen talking about the body in possession we not talk about doppy in your body yeah because you know how we are in the caribbean the moment we start thinking about um the moment we start thinking about possession we start thinking about evil spirit going into somebody and so in this instance we're not talking about that you know just like when you're in a dance hall session and you know the music sweet and the selector play right and they might play the right music and you start to feel a vibe it's like you feel something and you say yeah the selector i have it the selector go on with that thing it's a similar pattern here you are within the stick fighting competition a lot of singing and chanting and 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 heavy drumming is taking place to start feel a vibe there's a certain kind of energy that the drum ev 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 evokes within you 
that tells you that Lucier me need to go into this ring. That while you're in this ring, it also gives you this sense of invincibility that allows you to perform a particular way. So that dictates how you perform the energy that you take within the space. And that is why the fights are so rough. Yeah, that is why the fights are so violent because the fights, these are being driven by a certain kind of energy that comes from a space real within that you would not normally go if you did not have the singing and the chanting and the drumming that can guide and invoke that particular kind of energy. So here again is another video or another short clip that explains the spirituality or the energy of the stick fighting. Hey, look, pretty, come down. Hey, look, room, come down. Oh, they coming on. You know, man, she's mad. Hey, hold on. Hey, so this is where you're coming in. You're going and fight. You still don't feel the vibe. You're still telling all the people. You're not lying up. We said no. We were friends yesterday. Come on. So the game is our energy, too. Ah. So you see, all they don't start off there already. All they're in position. Right. It's a vibe that take over and. Two men looking to go at war. Uh, I know he was in the man wedding and the call again and I already. You understand? Watch watch face, watch face. Face. Come now, man, free you go. Mm -hmm. Right? Go Rome. So that's the vibe. It's a kind of ancestral energy, it's a spirit of warriors, a warrior game, a warrior right. tradition. From the time you pick up the stick. Ad additionally, you want to look spiritually again at the circle of the guile, the representation of the circle, that circle of life. Yes? Because in this guile, you know that when you think about songs are there about death. You're singing song, the same song they open with Mumma Mumma, your son in the grave. Already. You're telling somebody, say, listen, this is about death. We are about, to, you know, I'm going to murder you. However, it is that you're going to kill this person. Maybe not literally kill within this space, but you know that you're going to draw blood. You know you're about to fight. And so that circle of life of, of dying and coming out of the space, a new person, that kind of resurrection thing that's happening within their death and, 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 and life, you know, within that circle, it is something to pay keen attention to whenever it is that you're also within the circle and thinking about whatever it is that is happening within the guile. Um, critical again, to the spirituality and the spiritual representation is also how you prepare yourself. So the same way you prepare the war to fight, you also have to think about preparing yourself. And so there's an article that I was reading online. Um, I don't remember the name of the, of, the, of, the, of the writer for the article at this moment, but I know the title of it had to do with Behind the Mass. And what the writer was explaining is that whenever it is that it's going to be combat, in the same way other religious people, you know, put prayer to the forefront, the stick fighter also takes the prayer seriously. Prayer is really important. And the writer compares it to the spiritual Baptist and what probably would call in Jamaica the revivalist who goes to morning ground. So you know when something is coming up in Jamaica, when you have convention, people start to go into fasting and prayer and prepare themselves for that big mo moment. The revivalists go to their mission ground and they have a whole um, prayerful session that prepares themselves. It's the same way that the stick fighter prepares themselves spiritually. So the stick fighter goes into isolation. Yes, the stick fighter goes into isolation as part of the general preparation for um for the fight and a part of the 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 isolation would include the stick fighter um you know bonding with the weapon that they're going to use to fight you bond with your weapon so of course you prepare your weapon and you cure your weapon now you're preparing self you're going to isolation and you start to bond with your weapon they sometimes take ritual baths yeah, depending on what your religious belief is, you take they might take ritual baths, but they also abstain from sexual activities. Yes, they abstain from sexual activities. All of this in an effort to make sure that they are spiritually charged and ready to take on this big moment of combat. I'm going to put the link to the article in the description as well, so you can read and get a full sense of it for yourself when you are reading and the spirituality is kind of wrapped up with the ritualistic because the singing and the chanting and the excessive drumming that is happening within the um within the within the stick fighting is very ritualistic but it is through the singing and the chanting and the drumming as well that it invokes whatever it is that you're 
feeling naturally. Yes, it is invoking and allowing you to be able to have that kind of connection with your ancestor. The way it is that you're supposed to connect, being grounded, feeling what is happening and allow yourself to be led by the drum. Now, I'm about to share with you a clip from that TED Talk video that I would have watched. And so you listen and you'll be able to hear how the spirituality is being explained by these two gentlemen. So here it is. The stick fighter, you left home, left your children, left your wife, something calling you to this ring. You're not sure if you're coming back. So you walk into this ring of liberation with your song, your lavoy. Your lavoy is like your prayer, you know. It's your prayer. Today, 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 today in the Gaia, today, 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 today in the Gaia, today, today, Auntie Betsy go kill you here tonight. The drum beating, urging you on, just like that voice you hear sometimes that urges you on or cautions you. The roar of the crowd, the roar of the crowd, which gives you the energy to do what you have to do. Or make you coward because you know what they want some of them want blood but what they really want to see is a display of machismo skill and beauty so what is this guy this arena this for us a circle of life we began to realize it's a place where we could explore how to access our magic this place where angels create a tread this place of transformation death rebirth we recognize that this was a place where that galvanizing moment that luke skywalker had where they say luke use the force was daily practiced and tested just in our case, the mechanics of accessing the force was being beautiful to a fault. We recognize that grounded in this sense of internal beauty, one could face the guile of one's life, walking out of the pavilion in Lords with the crowd booing you, going for that critical job interview. That negotiations that broke down with the labor union. If we could enter these spaces carrying with us this deep intrinsic sense of beauty, grounded in our wanga, our own magic, we would be able, as our transformed self, to be fearless, passionate, joyful, trusting deeply that the universe would take care of us. And so, this place where the angels fear to tread became our home, our university, that place where we transformed ourselves. I'm Bobato praying in Mama. Ola Roy. I'm Bobato praying in Mama. Ola Roy. I'm Bobato praying in Mama. Ola Roy. See me, mother, leave me. All right, I do trust that you found that video quite useful, quite informative. And of course, as, as I said before, I'm going to put the link in the description so you can get a chance to watch the entire video for yourself and see how it is that you can get some more information from what is in that video. Now, let me hear your thoughts, yes, on the spiritual elements on the um on the on the historical elements and also about the ritualistic elements let me hear what you think within the comments section of the video put your comments on this talk so i'm inviting you yes to a conversation on this particular topic or, or this section 
of the um of the stick fighting video so let us hear some more what you think do you actually believe that stick fighting is really um training into adult process did um and, uh, into adulthood do you really think that why do you think that put your comments in the in the comment section and let us talk some more about it so this has brought us now to the end of our video until next time i make another video but before i go i just want to remind you to do what give this video a thumbs up so like comment share and make sure you subscribe to my video until when i make another video take very good care of yourself all the best walk good and may good up walk with you Water player, you bring the land where you want to play. Land where you want to play, you bring the land where you want to play. Land where you want to play, you bring the land where you want to play. Land where you want to play, you bring the land.